Well, would you look who it is? Tony Sakanaki. Some of you might recall the boring, boneheaded questions on a Tesla earnings call. The very same guy. Now, Tony, if you don't know, historically has been rather bearish on Tesla, thinking the stock's massively overvalued and all the competition's coming. It didn't, by the way. So I'm looking forward to hearing his take on Tesla's robotaxi event. Right now is Bernstein Senior Research Analyst, Tony Saganaki. Good morning to you. What do you expect we're going to hear? We've been waiting for uh, this news for a long time. I think it's exciting to many, but also for, for many, there's, a, there's some skepticism about when it will actually arrive. Uh, good morning, Andrew. Yes, I, I think um, the consensus is that Tesla will announce a dedicated robo-taxi model likely to avail- be available at some point in the future, let's say 27 or 28. So, I mean, obviously we are going to see a dedicated vehicle specifically designed, engineered, built for autonomy. Interesting that Tony threw out some predictions when this vehicle, I guess, would be on roads, which I guess that then tacitly is his own estimate of when Tesla has solved autonomy and is legally operating robotaxis. Let's listen again to those dates. We'll announce a dedicated robotaxi model likely to avail- be available at some point in the future, let's say 27 or 28. So 2027 or 2028, that appears to be Tony's estimate for when Tesla has solved autonomy, at least to the point where it would make sense for them to manufacture a dedicated vehicle. So three to four years from now, my estimates are somewhat more aggressive than that. I think Tesla's are as well, but it is worth taking a moment. Even Tony here, a Tesla bear, a skeptic, who's long been skeptical and long been bearish on the company. Although, in fairness, more bearish on the stock price than the company. Even Tony now sees robo-taxis as in autonomy happening in just a few years. The question I would have is, does Tony have any estimates for future cash flows from this business in his Tesla valuation model? Because it seems at this point, the vast majority of analysts covering Tesla stock, Tony among them, do not have Tesla robo-taxi revenue or profits in their valuation models at all because it hasn't happened yet, therefore it's against the laws on Wall Street. You get thrown in prison for life if you actually model something before it's happened, because that would require courage. That Tesla will demonstrate a, um, a um, application uh, whereby a ride-hailing app, uh, that it will provide some kind of update on where they are on full self-driving, and, and maybe also potentially announce that it's doing some robo-taxi trials. I expect if they did that, those would have to be with an accompanying driver, Um, but nevertheless starting trials in one or more cities in the U.S. I I think that's generally what's expected amongst uh, investors. There are big questions about whether Tesla will provide updates on Optimus Robot or whether it will um, provide an update on new models, particularly, you know, the revamped models expected. I've heard this a few times, it leaves me scratching my head. I mean, there's an extremely low but non-zero probability there'd be an update on Optimus, and the only reason that would happen is if it had something to do with autonomy, e.g., let's just say, random example, Tesla wanted to demonstrate how you might deliver an item to somebody. You know, Tesla Rover Taxi, you put an Optimus in the vehicle as well, so after the vehicle's got to its destination, the Optimus robot can walk out and deliver a parcel. I'm giving this an extremely low probability, but that's the only kind of context where it would make any sense to discuss the Optimus Humanoid Robot in any detail, let alone show it. As for mention of new vehicle models, I'm giving this a 0.0000000042069 chance. Why on earth would Tesla tell investors, who are predominantly investors, at an event that's going to get a lot of media coverage, meaning it will eventually reach general consumers? Why would they tell them about a product we already know about in any more detail, take the shine off the robotaxi and inevitably shoot a fucking cannonball through their current order flow because many customers today who are opting to buy a Model 3 or a Y because it's exceptional value learn about a more affordable version of essentially the same vehicle that they can just wait a little while and buy instead. Meaning many people go, well, fuck it, I will just wait. Tesla would be insane to do this. It boggles the mind that anyone expects this might actually take place. Of course, I could be wrong. I'm just, I don't understand why the fuck Tesla would Detail new vehicles that are more affordable. We already know about this. They've told us on earnings call the interim range of vehicles using some of the learnings for the modular manufacturing system for the next-gen vehicle will be implemented, get them to roughly 3 million units per year without needing to build new factories or new production lines in any meaningful scale. Am I the only one who thinks this would be absolutely fucking mad? Early next year or a lower cost model expected in 27. But but I think the focus will ultimately be on a robo-taxi um, you know, unveiling itself and an accompanying ride-hailing app.
So, Tony, we're looking at the stock now at $242.90. If, in fact, they make this announcement, how does this change the game? How does this change how you would value this company? Well, I, you know, I think investors are applying different probabilities and discount rates uh, to a robo-taxi service going forward. Now, this is nice to hear. The idea that investors would be thinking about this probabilistically, which they should, by the way. The question is, is Tony? Because remember, it's against the law, breaking the rules. He'll go to prison for a very long time if he takes the huge risk of modeling out possible implications of this business before it's already operational. And so I, I think it's widely anticipated, but but as you noted at the outset, there are lots of questions. Um, there are technical questions about whether Tesla can get to the reliability level with a more limited sensor suite. They only have cameras. Um, other competing autonomous vehicles have LIDAR and radar. So there's a technical question. I think there's a regulatory question. There's a timing question. And, you know, how competitive is this space going to be? Are prices going to be driven down? And how much value will there be to be captured? So. Regarding the technology, as I've said before, there's like a billion-ish examples of a dual camera neural net system driving vehicles fairly safely. They're called human. So we can throw that idea in the bin. Obviously, it's technically possible. In terms of regulatory approval, this is also a non-issue. Tesla is collecting mountains of data. At some point, they'll have enough data to prove beyond a shadow of doubt that their vehicles in XYZ region are XYZ times safer than human drivers. At that point, regulators have no choice. It's not a matter of personal opinion. It's a matter of the fucking data. So again, put that in the bin. Inevitable. In terms of cost, let's think about this. Waymo spending six plus figures, over $100,000 on vehicles plus expensive sensors, needing to pre-map everywhere in high definition first. Not a solution that scales, which is the biggest issue. But importantly, to Tony's point regarding cost, Tesla's about to unveil a vehicle that when scaled, it's probably going to cost them about 15, 18, at worst, maybe $20,000 to produce. Let's say a fifth of the cost, and this is being conservative, it's probably a sixth, a seventh of the cost of a competing so-called robotaxi. You do not need to be a genius like Tony here to realize that if a company can put an equivalent product or a superior product on roads for a fifth the cost, then that product will repay its cost significantly faster meaning you have a huge cost advantage, meaning you can actually charge a lot less per mile to customers and still print crazy amounts of money. Tesla has a huge cost advantage here as well. It's important to understand. And as I touched on, their ability to scale massively, they've built a generalized solution for autonomy. In essence, pick up a Tesla, drop it anywhere on earth, even if it's never been there before, and it'll know how to drive because it knows how to drive. I'm going to say that again, because it knows how to drive. Companies like Waymo don't have products that know how to drive. They have products that know how to move throughout a pre-mapped circuit, an impressive party trick, but not something that will widely scale. At this point, I feel like I'm the only person, I'm not, obviously many of you guys and girls agree, but I'm one of the few people covering Tesla, talking about Tesla, thinking about Tesla and looking at their autonomy, who is adamant. There's no fucking hope in hell. Companies like Waymo, Cruise, rest in peace, are going to have a chance of competing with Tesla on cost or scaling even close to as fast as Tesla, or having vehicles that are as capable in terms of the safety profile long term. I mean, they just don't have viable business models. But there are very few analysts, if any, saying the same things. They all seem to be under the impression that it's a huge pie and everyone's going to take an equally large slice, even though some of them have hardware that's four, five, six times the cost. There's only one company that has a generalized solution that will scale rapidly. I just, I just don't understand. I mean, imagine this was like 20 years ago. And you had a bunch of analysts talking about Netflix who are about to unveil their online streaming day, but then going on to explain that it wasn't really clear that they'd have an advantage over traditional video rental stores where customers have to waste time, physically go to the store, rent a video, drive back home, watch it, rewind it, bring it back and don't be late because you'll pay a massive fee. I think folks are getting a little bit confused. In that analogy, they'd be like, well, it's just movies, right? Movie rental, some online, in person, what's the difference? It's the same stuff. It's unclear to me. I don't versus looking at the robo taxis autonomy and thinking oh well it's the same stuff right it's a, it's a vehicle that drives people <laughs> i'm going to ignore the lidar the pre-mapping being necessary kind of lost for words here is there a single analyst out there that's under the impression that tesla has an unassailable lead here that they're going to absolutely dominate autonomy is there one I mean, you got to feel for people like tony if they you know nudge a few they're extremely intelligent wall street colleagues working at other firms, hey, what do you think about Waymo and Tesla and RoboTaxis? They all think the same shit, say the same shit. Then why would they have any reason to doubt? It's just so obvious to me that they've got it wrong. 
So investors are ascribing different um, probabilities and timing and what, to these what, scenarios. What probabilities are you ascribing to those things, and how are you doing the valuation? Well, well here. Excellent question from Andrew. Here's how I think about it, Andrew, is I think it will be difficult for Tesla to leapfrog existing players. Uber, Waymo, and others are doing level four robo-taxi service today in multiple cities, even if Tesla is able to leapfrog. Um, so he's a controversial and accurate hot take. Whenever you hear anyone discussing autonomy and they mention level one, level two, level three, right? Any of that shit, they're admitting that they have outsourced their thinking to some dimwits to do their thinking for them. Instead of actually observing the capabilities of the software itself in the real world, actually operating the ground source, the truth, they're like an NPC who watches the fake news to learn what they should believe or what they should be scared of or how long they should stay at home, hiding in a corner, fearing for their life. Wait, what? This is the box ticking mindset in a nutshell. And let me explain. There'll come a point where Tesla knocks on a regulator's door and says, hey, Dick, here's a bunch of data. Our software is way safer than humans. Approve, thanks. And they say, oh, good point. Yeah, it's definitely safer than human. You have approval. Suddenly, all the box tickers now will have a massive shift in the way that they see and perceive Tesla or an autonomy because suddenly there's a new categorization on the exact same fucking software that existed before the door knocking took place. Put simply, watch what the software is doing. Know how it's doing what it's doing and note the rate of improvement. That's it. You don't need to rely on somebody else telling you what category, what level this autonomy is. It's irrelevant. And after that short tirade, the summary of which is think for yourself, don't outsource your thinking. I'm looking forward to determining whether or not Tony, who was just asked the question, are you modeling? How are you modeling this stuff out? Actually has a pair of nuts and is willing to take the risk of probabilistically waiting this opportunity or if he's given himself an excuse because he's just said that it's not clear to him if Tesla will be able to leapfrog companies like Waymo. I think it'll be a limited, um, you know, a limited year advantage. So let's say in a year Tesla has level five robo taxis. They can go anywhere. They have a ride hailing service. My guess is competitors are going to catch up reasonably quickly. So this notion of having sustained outside profits, even if Tesla were to leapfrog given the technical hurdles and the regulatory hurdles, I think are difficult. And the valuation of Uber is $150 billion. I feel so bad for this guy. Like he's just such a poindexter. He just doesn't get it. Why does the valuation of Uber have anything at all to do with this? Oh, wait, I know because Uber has a service that uses vehicles with people driving them to move people from point A to point B. Therefore, it would be a comparable valuation to another company that has vehicles moving people from point A to point B, except, spoiler alert, it doesn't because uh, in autonomy, the most expensive thing, the driver who needs to be paid, <laughs> doesn't exist. The unit economics are just so different. The cost per mile is so different. It's, oh, God. I really think Tony's trying his best, and I just think he just doesn't fucking get it. The poor guy. Remember the earlier analogy, Netflix online streaming versus, say, a traditional video rental store like Blockbuster? Imagine thinking it made sense to compare the valuations of the two companies, which have completely different cost structures. The valuation of Uber, you know, probably in the U.S. is, is half of that, $75 billion. Tesla stock today embeds, we think, $600 billion beyond the core auto business. Much of that ascribed to robo-taxi. So we struggle with that, that, that differential, given the probabilities that I have. Let me ask you this. Wait a second. Andrew asked how Tony was modeling out Tesla's robotaxi business, right? I didn't hallucinate, did I? Like, if and how are you modeling this out? Because Tony just finished saying that many investors are modeling this out in terms of probabilities and then discounting it back, right? Then Andrew asks, well, basically, are you doing this? How are you modeling this out? To which Tony responds, we struggle to see how Tesla would leapfrog Waymo. Cool story, bro, but... That doesn't, doesn't answer the question. This is some Kamala Harris shit right now. How are you modeling this out? And then Tony goes on to talk about how Uber's valuation is XYZ. Who cares? Irrelevant. And that they believe that Tesla's stock currently has embedded a huge amount of valuation for robot. That's not the question. He didn't ask what investors. He asked you. What do you model? Do you model? How do you model this? It is okay, Tony, to just say, oh, we don't think it's going to happen. Therefore, we ignore it. Or we're scared of breaking the rules because we don't want to go to prison for life for having some testicles, therefore we're not going to model it until it happens. I hope Andrew's pushing back right now. But at this point in time, it appears to me that Tony has just tacitly admitted he's a gigantic fucking pussy when directly asked how he, e.g. Bernstein, are modelling out 
future cash flows from Tesla's robotaxi business. Instead of answering the question, he just deflected. Why? Why is it so hard to just say, I'm a pussy and I just, I don't model it out? Oh, actually, I kind of understand why it would be hard to admit you're a fucking pussy. Yeah, fair enough. This in terms of just the competition piece of it, which is to say, you made the argument uh, that you think that Uber and a Waymo will have an advantage, maybe given LiDAR and other things, over Tesla. Uh, there is an argument to be made, and maybe you'll disagree with it, which is that, you know, they have a number of the you know, number. They have thousands, tens of thousands of these cars on the street today that have cameras on them. They're taking in data that that can't really be matched. Uh, just wanted to point out Tesla's got roughly 7 million vehicles on roads today. 7 million is a little bit more than 10 or 20,000. If you look at uh, some of their self-driving features right now, they clearly seem to be the leader or the most advanced in terms of where that would be if you were to sort of set, set aside what Waymo is doing. Is there an argument you made that they will leapfrog everybody and that they in some ways already have? Well, I think the bull case is they will leapfrog. I think it's very difficult to say they already have because we, you know, um, Waymo is doing 100,000 rides a month right now with essentially a perfect safety record in multiple cities. Um, Tesla's nowhere close to that. Now, surely I'm not the only one that noticed when asked how Tony was modeling robotaxis, he didn't actually answer the question. And to his claim that he can't suggest that Tesla's ahead of companies like Waymo, I understand Tony's argument. On paper, if you're a binary thinking Poindexter, you ask the question, is Waymo operating any robotaxi services anywhere on planet Earth? Yes. Is Tesla? No. Therefore, Tesla cannot possibly be ahead of Waymo. But we've got to look a little bit deeper here. Instead of looking at what's going on with the services and thinking yes, no, black and white, look at the capability of the software. We can see countless videos online of intervention-free drives lasting 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 minutes, two and a half hours, not touching the wheel once to intervene in Tesla vehicles today, not everywhere, and interventions still occur. But the tiny pockets of the United States in which Waymo is currently operating its robotaxi service, reliant upon pre-mapping in HD, lots of safety nets and guardrails. I mean, bro, you could train a blind person to walk through a maze, right? Enough practice where you know where every obstacle is, almost like you've pre-mapped in HD because you've got a mental model in your head. And suddenly you can impress people by having somebody who has no vision whatsoever Apparently, almost miraculously being able to navigate their way through a maze. This is what Waymo is doing right now. You pre-map everything in HD with LiDAR down to the millimeter or the inch. And then you bounce lasers off everything to make sure nothing's moved and everything's fine. It's basically like being on rails. And this is only happening in a few pockets. Then you look at Tesla vehicles in huge swaths of the United States doing intervention free drives. And you ask yourself, hang on a minute. Would it be possible today that Tesla perhaps could in theory be operating a robotaxi service in a few small pockets, much like Waymo? The answer to that question is obviously yes. They're not yet. So in Tony's world, is Tesla operating a robotaxi service legally anywhere yet? No, okay, therefore Waymo must be ahead. Instead of actually looking at the ground source truth, the actual capabilities of the software operating in the real world, Tony's thinking process appears to be, is Tesla operating any robotaxis? No, well, I'll ignore what my eyes show me because that wouldn't be useful. Therefore, Tesla's behind Waymo, the end. Boggles the mind. Let me flip this argument on its head. If we were to take a Waymo vehicle and place it on one of the many thousands of different routes a Tesla vehicle can take intervention free now in the United States and have the Waymo vehicle attempt to drive that same path, reach the same destination, how would the Waymo vehicle fare? And the answer is it would immediately pull over and ask for daddy to come and help or alternatively just start mowing people down. Tony has to be one of the dumbest smart people I know. Can't wait to see the Wall Street reactions to Tesla's 1010 autonomy event. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. 
On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This fuel has been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more. Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer i just i cannot believe how effective this is no longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons it's fucking amazing there's only one thing to recommend seriously try athletic greens you won't go back so obviously just like elon musk is a liar a fraud a con man a scammer a fake engineer and tesla's going bankrupt you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who without any financial incentive was promoting this product to his audience on patreon when they're asking about health and what he's doing for supplements because obviously there was some other reason he recommended that obviously I'm not sure what it was but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game is improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst that could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.